Alright everyone, it is Berka here, and today we're going to be doing something uh, a little different than what I usually do on my channel. Um, I hope you don't mind change for this one one video, because I have um, I have something I really want to talk about, um, and it's it, it involves a game. You can probably tell from the thumbnail, title of the video, music playing in the background. Um, I want to talk about today uh, Mother 3, because I... It's it's just incredible, and <laughs> I don't I I've never been able to say that about a game before, but it, it it's it's it it's art. No matter what you say, it's 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 art, and it's it's glorious. And I just want to give it some praise here, because I really I I don't have any other way to do that. I I really want people to try this game out and try to beat it because it's <laughs> it's really good. And I, I honestly have no other way to put it. I think it's just amazing. Um, so I probably should just uh, say something beforehand before we, um, you know, get started here. Um, there won't be any spoilers. I'm, I'm going to try to make this as spoiler-free as possible. Um, so there will be a lot of generalizations in terms of certain scenes that occur in the game. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to describe them in detail just like the time that they take place in the story so you don't feel a bit worried about that um, I'm gonna have music from the game playing in the background because I, a lot of it's really fitting for I guess this type of video um, and yeah I just I just want to get into it I hope I don't ramble too long I don't want to make this video like all that long but I'll make it for as long as I feel necessary I don't think it'll be too long though so you shouldn't have to worry about that so let's see um, I'll start off kind of where my history with the franchise is, I guess, of the whole Earthbound Mother franchise, whatever you call it. I call it Mother now because, I mean, Mother Zero was, or Mother One, I guess, it's Earthbound Zero. But Mother One was the very first game for the NES. There was Earthbound, which is for the SNES, and then obviously Mother 3 for the Game Boy Advanced. Um, I never knew about this franchise because I was actually born in 1997, so I'm like, I'm 17 years old right now, right? So I didn't have a Super Nintendo. I didn't even have an N64, so I didn't know about anything involving Mother 3 on that. Um, so yeah, I, I really didn't know much about it. I knew about the franchise from Smash Brothers Melee uh, for the GameCube, because um, that had Ness in it and also Onet, which was like I believe his home hometown in Earthbound. I haven't. I'm, I'm yet. I've yet to play Earthbound actually, um, which I probably should have before I played Mother 3, but. Uh, it's fun. I, I understood a lot of the references because I've watched videos on Earthbound before, so I kind of understood a lot of the references in Mother 3. But, yeah, I, I knew about it from Melee. Um, I, I, I didn't know what to think of Ness because he he didn't really look the type, if that makes sense, like as a character I'd want to play. Like I used to play Captain Falcon a lot, and I still do in Smash 4. He's probably, I don't know, maybe not my favorite, but he's up there. Um, so I used to play like a lot of those cooler looking characters because I, I loved F Zero. F Zero is fantastic. Um, but I, yeah, I just I didn't like Ness. I didn't like the way he looked. I didn't really understand his move set. I had no idea how to recover. Like he has the uh, PK Thunder, right? And he has to hit himself with it to recover. I didn't know how to do that. So the whole time I kind of would just <laughs> I'd try playing him. I'd get the double jump, and then I'm like, okay, fuck. If I don't have another, if I can't get on the stage with that double jump, I'm done. And I'd basically always lose. So I just kind of never gave Ness a try. I did like Onet though, um, the uh, Smash Brothers uh, melee stage. It was also in Brawl and actually Smash 4 if I, if I remember correctly. I think it was. Um, but that's my history with it from that timeline. Time more timeline. It's like I'm fucking talking with like different timelines here. Um, but yeah, I think you know what I mean. And then fast forward to I want to say whenever Brawl came out. That might have been 2008 and. I, I, again, I'm using memory here, I think Lucas, who is brand new in Brawl, he was never in any other game, he uh, was, he started with Lucas, if I remember, you didn't have Ness though, so I didn't really know who Lucas was, um, and I kind of thought maybe he was just kind of like the replacement for Ness or something, I, I actually kind of assumed back in the day that maybe Earthbound was an older game and that this new 
Lucas character was from like an Earthbound 2 or some shit like that. Which oddly enough, that's the name. That's also a name of Mother 3. Is what it goes by Earthbound 2. Um, so I just kind of assumed maybe they kicked an S out, and I, I really, to be honest, I didn't care because I mean, at the time, I think in Brawl I was playing Snake and Wolf, um, which you know ripped them in Smash 4. But you know that's beside the point. Um, and I guess in Subspace, the only, it was the only time I really played Lucas. I did, I did actually kind of like him in Brawl. I, um, I was never good at any like I was never good at melee or brawl. So I like I don't I don't really know what the what tiers were or anything like that like how to properly play characters. I didn't even know how to do fucking like aerial attacks. So I was really garbage at the game. But um, I kind of did like Lucas for his uh, his PK love ability, which is his up smash, is like the big explosion. I like that a lot because obviously it was easy to kill people with. But yeah, um, and then they had um. They had Onet in there, but they also had New Pork City, which is like, um, it's a part in Mother 3. Again, I'm not going to tell you, it's kind of near the very end where you experience what New Pork City is, um, and it's like this big utopia, um, and it was in, it was in Brawl, and like, I, I thought it was, it was an interesting stage because it had the ultimate Chimera in it, which was like this big, uh, huge mouthed, like, I guess, I thought it was just some monster, and it would kill you instantly if it if it bit you, like in the actual game. Oddly enough, um, and the whole the whole stage was really weird and really big. And I think it was one of my least least played stages, just because of how of how, uh, of how huge it was. But like, I don't know. I, I I never liked it all that much. I can appreciate it more now, obviously, since I played the game. But like, you know, back in the day, I didn't really know what I was going into. Um, and then Onet was in Brawl, obviously. So we have that. And then, come to Smash 4, we have, obviously, Onet's, um, well, actually, the Smash 3DS, which had Magic Hand, which was, um, I don't really know what that has to do with Earthbound. I think it has to do with something inside Ness's head or something like that, like his, his mind. I think that's all I really know about it. Um, but that was a really interesting stage, because it was actually a new mother stage, a lot like New Pork City. But, then in Smash 4, we got... Uh, on it, we got on it back, which was, you know, it's been in like fucking three games now, so I really, I wasn't that excited. I was, like, I was kind of disappointed. They took out, yeah, Magic Hand, and they also took out the Pac Maze stage, which was my favorite in 3DS, but like, again, that's not really the point of this here video. Um, where's I going with this? Oh, yeah, and they took out Lucas uh, from Smash 4, so all there was was Ness, and I don't know, I, I kind of wish he was back. I didn't play him, but I just liked having him there, I guess. And um, <laughs> then that fateful that fateful day came. I think it was in February or March, where they announced Lucas as DLC, along with obviously the Mew the Mewtwo trailer. Um, and I don't know why. I really I started playing Ness a lot in Smash Four as I've gotten better at the game. Um, and I, I really I was ex I was excited because I was like I like Ness a lot, and Lucas looks to have. A somewhat original moves that they could be ch that could be used for chaining and stuff like that, and he lo just looked really cool. Um, and I was I was excited for him. So that's about the time when I started. We're actually getting into the actual Mother franchise now, where I started reading up about uh, Earthbound, Earthbound Zero, and Mother Three, and just kind of the things behind them. It, it was it was a stupid thing for me to do, but I accidentally spoiled a lot of the stuff in Mother Three, a lot of the big reveals. So, for any people that have played Mother 3, I spoiled who the Masked Man was. Uh, I know it's a stupid thing for me to do. I spoiled who the, man, the main antagonist was. Again, it was a dumb thing. And I spoiled... Um, what was it? Um, oh, the, yeah, a lot of the stuff at the beginning as well. So, sadly, I don't think I got the full effect of the game. Uh, when I did get to play... I, I, I guess the point is here is before, um, or I guess actually when Lucas came out, I started playing Mother 3, um, just because I felt, you know, I kind of wanted to see what this, what this, this kid, this kid out of nowhere was from, um, and I've heard, I have a friend who's really into Earthbound, he's, um, yeah, I don't think he's played on the 3 because he wants to wait for official translation, however, however long that might take, but, um, yeah, he's been waiting a while and he told me all this good stuff about the Earthbound franchise, or rather the Mother franchise. 
And um, I wanted to give it a try. I thought I wasn't interested in Earthbound at the time. Earthbound Zero, I heard, was too difficult, so I wasn't really going to give it that a try. And Mother 3 just kind of... I listened to some of the tunes, and it really just kind of... It, it felt like a like a Pokemon like um how do I put this uh, like like it's it felt very Pokemon-y, if that makes sense a lot of the music and that is something I, I I'm, I'm a big fan of the Pokemon franchise not a huge fan in any stretch but like I do enjoy the games quite a lot and it felt like Pokemon Emerald type music and I really like that and I knew a lot of the music from Brawl as well they remixed a lot of Mother 3 music and also Earthbound music from all the other games too. Um, so I knew what a lot of the music was like, and it, I don't know, something about that really pulled me in as well. And then also, a lot of the spoilers involving the story really pulled me in as well. Um, and that's when I started playing Mother 3, was about a couple days after Lucas came out for Smash 4. I think Lucas is really fun in the game, he's, he's unfortunately he's not very good. So I mean, I kind of stopped playing him, I'm back to Ness now though, but, yeah, um, yeah, I started playing Mother 3, right, and... I was pretty much hooked. I think the first day I played, I put about four hours in one night <laughs> because I don't know. Like, it's the very the intro to the to the game is really um, it's really really good. Uh, if if anyone knows the love theme from Smash Bros. Brawl or Smash Four that plays on the on that stage, the very first part of that song, not the sad part, but the happier part, is actually like one of the first songs you hear in the game. And I was just fucking hooked because I love the love. I fuck. I, I love the love theme. That's I don't even know how to put that. It just sounds the way it does. Um, and when I when I heard it start playing immediately, immediately when you walked out of this cabin, I was just like, man, this is. I, I want to play more. And I kept going through. Um, the graphics were gorgeous for the GBA game. It's probably dare I say the best looking GBA game. Um, and I'm not just being that saying that because I'm biased or something. Uh, no other game really compares. It kind of looks like more of a modern indie game than anything, and I think that really plays a big role in <laughs> in terms of why I think the graphics are nice, because it, it holds up very well. Um, and everything just looks... Ex everything's extremely polished. All the sprites are gorgeous. There's a lot of emotion that's betrayed <laughs> via the sprites. And... Um, just little things like that. It's a very polished game. Um, Shigesato Itoi, which is the guy that is the director behind the game, um, did a fantastic job. And I really, I really hope that he makes a new Mother game someday. But I, I think every, every Mother fan kind of wishes that. But uh, maybe someday. But where was I? Uh, oh yeah, I was talking about kind of the intro. A lot of that is yeah, plays up very well. The whole story in general unfolds very nicely. Um, well, quote-unquote quote, nicely, it's kind of a fucked-up story, actually. Um, a lot of it involves nature versus technology, and greed, and, like, the ideas of buying happiness and stuff like that. Like, a lot of really more subjective tones that most of the games don't really go for. Um, and it, it really it fits well for an RPG, because it gives you time. RPGs are rather slow, and it gives you time to really take in what you're going through. And you can experience it without being rushed, like a platform or an adventure game or something like that. And I think an RPG is perfect for that. Um, and it's perfect for Mother 3, pretty much. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at here. Um, and as you go through the story, you there's all these really interesting characters you meet. Um, like these uh, these seven characters called the Meg Gypsies, which are like... I don't know. They, they're kind of like trannies, I hate to say. Um... Well, I guess I don't hate to say that kind of that's, that kind of sounds fucked up, but like, y you know what I mean? Like, they they act like women, but you can clearly tell they're like dressed like men. And they're the Meg Gypsy theme is fucking fantastic, by the way. But they're um <laughs> they're really funny characters, and they help you out through the story, um, trying to help you pull what's known as uh, I think the Seven Needles they're known as, which is a main plot point in the story. But I'm not I'm not really gonna describe what they do. Um, and it's actually a race, um, a race against time against another character in the story known as the Masked Man, who's also trying to pull um, seven of the needles as well. And whoever basically pulls the most needles in the other gets to awaken a big, a, a big thing. That's all I'm gonna go. And I don't know. It, it just escalates from that point, um, and it becomes like a, again a race against time. You're going through all these really cool environments and. 
it leads up to probably, um, and I, I hope I don't, like, fucking, I don't know, start tearing up when I say this, but, like, uh, probably the the saddest ending to, er to anything I've ever seen in my life. Um, and, like, it, maybe it's because it really hit home with, with me, um, if, 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 any, if anyone's seen the ending to the game, the whole about hour-long ending, you would understand why, like, maybe why I, I would have some connection, because there was a big event in my life that happened a couple months ago involving this big conflict in my family, basically, and it was between me and my younger brother, obviously, and, well, I guess not obviously, but now you know, right? And, um... Uh, the ending really has something to do with that because you learn the identity of the masked man, what he plays in the story, um, and basically the final battle is all about a rekindling of sorts. And uh, something about just the way it plays out, the text that you experience, like there's a part where your mother says to the masked man, that the masked man looks exhausted and should really come home and it, it's something about how it plays with the uh, the music and just the setting of what's going on um, it really <laughs> it's really goddamn amazing because it, 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 it makes you fucking feel really sad and feel for these characters that don't really exist um, and it's something I've never really felt in the game before, and I'm so glad I got to feel it in a game like this, because it, 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 As stupid as it sounds, it makes you feel, it makes you feel more human. And that's, that's, that might be the totally inaccurate way to put it, but like... It kinda, it makes you relate to things that these characters are going through without you actually being there. And it's, it's something really superficial. And... As, uh, if I had to say anything to someone that's maybe not quite on the edge of playing this game... The ending is is worth it. The ending, do not spoil it for yourself as much as you might want to watch it now after me trying to say how good it is. You need to go through the story to really feel the impact of the ending because it, it's it's about the whole game's about struggle and loss and happiness, sadness, uh, all all these emotions, and it it makes you feel things that aren't just fun, which is what video games are made for, and that's really. It, it's something incredible. So, before I end this, I guess, this kind of timely rant, maybe not a rant, it's just more of a storytelling, I guess. Uh, I, I just want to say, if if you don't think you're going to like the game, you, maybe you're not into these JRPG-style games, which I, I hardly would consider it that, because it doesn't really have many of the, the cliches that those type of games have, but um, I would... Get it somehow, if, if you can, get a reproduction cart with the English translation, the Tomato um, translation, which he's the, Tomato's the guy that translated the game, so, you know, props to you, man, it's it's a fucking good translation, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed how much you can keep the emotion going in, in, the, in, in your translation, it's just incredible, so I thank you for that, but if you can get a reproduction cart, um, you could, if you could patch the ROM, and make it turn it to English and play it on an emulator, just do whatever you can to play this game. Although it might seem like a struggle to play it, it's worth the time. It took me about 24 hours to complete, which isn't that long for an RPG if you consider consider everything. Um, but there's like there's no grinding, very little grinding, maybe. Um, the bosses are challenging, which is nice, and they make you think. Um, and there's a lot of deeper themes that if you're looking to do, <laughs> as stupid as it sounds, like a case study on a game or something like that. This is something to do it on, because there's a lot of to tones at play here, and it, it, it really builds up to something at the end that's just... I, I don't think I'll ever experience it in another game, unless it's unless another Mother game is made, but... Just just play the game. Give, give, it, give it a shot. If you don't like it, that's fine. You at least said you tried. And I, I think some people will get hooked on it if you if you give it a try. It's, it's worth it. Alright. So thank you for watching. I hope this wasn't too long. Um, and, uh, I'll see you on the next video. See you guys later.